talk about the the uh, corona stuff and God, but God didn't give me nothing to say about it. I was like, okay, God, because every week I get up, I say, okay, Father, what you want me to say? He gave me something else to say. I said, okay, God, or I'm going to say what you want me to say. And that's what he's looking for. I want vessels that's going to do my bidding when I tell them to do my bidding. Don't do your own thing. He don't want, he's tired of people doing their own thing. He's like, man, y'all ain't representing me. Y'all representing yourself. And that's why there's no anointing on what they, they hype themselves up. And these people in the pews that don't know no scripture, like, ooh, that's such a good word. Hallelujah. Ah! Like, you ain't even learned nothing. You still living in sin. So why are you jumping and shouting? Man, the script, the word is supposed to find you where you are, locate you, convict you, and be like, I'm a sinner. I'm a sinner. But I got baptized. I'm a sinner. You're supposed to repent of your sin and return to God and serve him the right way. Now, I believe according to Galatians 6 and 6, and then you read that. Don't just hear me say Galatians 6 and 6. Go read it. Uh, it says that, um, that, if, that, 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 that that if you are instructed in the word, then you must share all the good things with your instructor. I told you, I don't. I believe in giving by obligation. In other words, I believe if you receive, you give. And I believe because you're receiving from this ministry, you, you know, realize the, that, that we've put uh, these free videos on YouTube for years. And I'm just, you know, and these videos, I'm, listen, we get all around the world, these messages blessing people all around the world. Everybody, I mean, I, I can't tell you how many calls and emails we get uh, talking about how God is transforming people's lives, bringing deliverance and healing and restoration. And many people are saying they don't even have a word like that in our city. And, and, and so, um, and which is something else that we're gearing up for to, to do some church planning. But anyway, um, but uh, if you are receiving from this ministry, the Bible instructs you to share. Uh, or so back into what is feeding you. So if I'm feeding you as a pastor, as a man of God, I don't care if you got a church or a pastor, uh, but if you're coming to, to and receiving from our channel and receiving from these videos, which are being provided to you for free, then you are obligated to sow back and share back with this ministry because you are being fed. That's biblical principle. That's the principle of Galatians 6 and 6. Galatians 6 and 7 goes on to say, uh, don't be deceived. God is not mocked. It's talking about sowing into a man of God. We use that scripture wrong. When, whatever you sow into a man of God, that and that only shall you also reap. If you sow sparingly into who's feeding you, then you're going to reap sparingly. But when you are liberal to those who are sowing the spiritual food into you, then, uh, then, then you will reap a liberal. And so uh, it's very important how you take care of an anointing, how you support the anointing and anointing that's, that's sown into your life. Don't leave, and I'm not just talking about me, don't ever take men of God for granted, somebody who's anointed, sowing that word into your life. Don't ever uh, uh, mistreat that or, or take or be common with that or feel that you don't have a part to play in their support. Because the Bible says, if I, if, if, if I sow into you my carnal, what is it that I reap your, if I sow into you my spiritual, what is it that I reap your carnal? In other words, we're supposed to have a reciprocating relationship. If you come to YouTube and you're receiving from those videos, then the Bible obligates you to begin to sow to so back to sustain my life. If the spiritual word of God is sustaining your life, then the Bible says you must share all good things with me, meaning your natural things should sustain my life. That's how you build a relationship. Uh, with a man of God and that's how the anointing flows into your life so that's why it's so important for you to uh, to understand obligation giving you know I don't like all of the gimmicks and tricks and playing the games I believe that if you're receiving the word if, if yokes are being destroyed if God is removing your burdens and, and, and your life is getting better then that means you're receiving the word the anointed word is breaking the yokes and uh, you have an obligation at that point Amen Amen. The title of today's message is Doing the Work of an Evangelist. Making foolproof of thy ministry. Doing the work of an evangelist. Making full, foolproof of thy ministry. We're going to go to 2 Timothy's. When you get there, say amen. 2 Timothy's. Amen. See, when you've been taught properly, you know you you don't you don't mishandle the word of God. You don't get up and try to be seen. That's not what being an evangelist is, being a minister is, being a witness for God is. You don't 
no flesh glories in the presence of God. If you see flesh, God ain't there. If you see flesh right up here in the choir, God ain't in the praise and worship. If you see flesh right here, it God ain't in it. If you see flesh right here, God ain't there. Because no flesh can glory in the presence of a, a holy God. He was like, I want to be worshipped. And that's why Satan got kicked out. He, even though he wasn't flesh, he wanted glory. He want, ooh, I want the worship. I want. Uh, he fell in love with the worship of the Most High God, and he wanted it, and tried to get, and tried to thought he was gonna be bigger and better than God, and got kicked out and deceived one third of the angels. Amen. So we're gonna read Second Timothy two, verses uh, one. When you get there, say Amen. Thou therefore, my son, be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus. In the things that thou hast heard of me among many witnesses, the same commit thou to what? The same commit thou to faithful men who shall be able to teach others also. Yet we have unfaithful people wanting to touch and handle the things of God, saying, use me. Here I go. Oh, I, 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 I got a word. You got unfaithful people coming up in ministries. And y'all looking at the, the onside, uh, on the, the what ministries look, at uh, look like now, that's because unfaithful people have been touching the things of God. Amen. And it looks like a mess. But they coming up in here, ooh, use me. I want to be used. And, and who do? And we who are in leadership positions in the body, because the body of Christ, there's still a body. Even though people say, I done left the churches. It don't matter. There's still a body that God is with. He, is still, he still has a body of believers. Amen. And we who are in leadership positions in the body are standing strong on the scriptures that say, Confidence in an unfaithful man in time of trouble is like a broken tooth and a foot at a joint. So this is, so you who are unfaithful coming up in the ministry, in a strong word-based ministry, this is how we see you. Confidence in an unfaithful man in, the, in time of trouble is like a broken tooth. Have you ever had a toothache? An orange gel didn't relieve your pain? And the Bible says, also it says, and a broken in a foot at a joint. You know if something's at a joint, you in pain? And they got to set that thing back in place? With you unfaithful person wanting to touch something, this is you. This is you. And this is, this is how leaders see an unfaithful person. They come up and hear, oh, I want to touch. And we look at them like, man, please. <laughs> we saying it within ourselves, please. <laughs> you ain't touching up in there. Yet these unfaithful cats are still saying, I got a word, and I want to share. Why would we bring unnecessary pain and torture? <laughs> Why would we bring unnecessary pain and torture on ourselves? The Bible says, confidence in an unfaithful man in time of trouble is like a broken tooth in a foot out of joint. Is this not scripture? This is uh, this is in Proverbs. I forgot to write what what, what verse in, uh, it is and what uh, chapter and verse it is, but it's in Proverbs. So why would we bring unnecessary pain and torture on ourselves? Paul told Timothy to preach. Another word for preach is to minister, to exhort, to teach everybody. See, we we teach everybody. We minister. We exhort. We preach to everybody. But to trust only what? Faithful men. Faithful men. Faithful, whether that be faithful woman, faithful man. To t uh, uh, trust faithful men who should be able to what? Teach others. That's an evangelist. That's a minister. That's a preacher. The mic don't give, the mic don't give you special abilities to preach. If you feel that way, I was just in Sam's yesterday. If you feel you gotta have a mic, they got that little, that little, uh, that little mic, the, uh, the speaker with the mic, and it's on the wheels. One fifteen. Y'all got taxes. If you feel that you are called to just share the word, 
for $115 in tax, you can go to Sam's, get you a rolling system, a karaoke system, and you will have mic power, baby. And you can teach the word, mic power, on the street. <laughs> they don't want to go on no street. That's hard ministry. They won't come up in the church where everybody's been taught to honor, to sit there, to respect. <laughs> but if you, if you need mic ministry, get you a karaoke machine, and it has wheels on it, and you can share and preach, exhort, minister, be an evangelist all day, all night. Hey, street ministry 24-7. It's free. It's free. All these bums up out here, they live on the street now. You got you an instant church. Go preach to them <laughs> if you feel that you're called. But anyways, <laughs> amen. So anyway, so Paul told Timothy to preach, to minister, to exhort, to teach everybody, but to trust faithful men who should be able to teach others also. This person, would th this person would therefore be called an evangelist, the person who's sharing, who's teaching, who's preaching, who, that, who after Paul told Timothy what to do, the, the, I'm, I'm ministering to you, Timothy, now you minister to everybody else, and they should be able to teach after you have ministered the scriptures to them because that, that word is supposed to go inside you, locate you, and cause you to see yourself, and you change, and you, uh, and you do the word yourself. Now you should be able to uh, uh, share with them, and they should be able to, the same thing should happen in their life, and they should be able to go out and reach somebody else. Teach one, reach one. That's all the minister is. That's all the evangelist is. This don't, this don't qualify does not qualify you Amen. teach one reach one Amen. reach one teach one evangelism that's evangelism amen so so this person let me find this is what a let me find out I don't okay this person would therefore become an evangelist evangelist is a person who seeks to convert others to the Christian faith especially by public preaching so do you see how what an evangelist is Public, being out in the public. You ain't got to get them saved in church. You see somebody walk, hey, you know God? Oh, 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 they talking, talking crazy like, I, I, I'm about to lose my mind. Oh, that's my opportunity to share Jesus with you. He's a man. He's a, man, a peace giver in the man. Baby, you know Jesus. Can I pray for you? They ain't going to turn down the prayer. You just evangelize. Public preaching. That's public preaching. You ain't got to have a mic and you ain't got to be loud. We, we, we can play, pray right softly, baby, if you, and they're going to be like, thank you. A minister is attending to the needs of others. This is what all these words are. Amen. But people see it on our name, minister this, deacon this, evangelist this. I'm just giving you the definitions of what they really are. You don't get special powers in church. <laughs> this is what we as Christians are to be, whether we are male or female, evangelists, ministers, exhorters, talking to people. And you don't need a mic to do the work of an evangelist. Let's go to 2 Timothy 2, verse 3. Thou therefore endure what? Thou, therefore, endure hardness as a what? A good soldier of Jesus Christ. Thou, therefore, endure hardness as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. Thou, for, therefore, come in here and cry about all your problems. No. Thou, therefore, endure what? Hardness. Your life is hard? Okay, the Bible says Scripture. We're going back to Scripture, right? Therefore, endure hardness as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. Therefore, thou therefore endure hardness as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. No man that warreth entangleth himself with the affairs of this life, that he may please him who have chosen him to be a soldier. No man that warreth. Like if okay if you if you going you say I'm gonna be a soldier for Christ I'm a war for Jesus you don't go 
take off your armor and be like, okay, I'm ready to go get high now. No. The Bible says no man that warreth, no man that warreth entangled, entangleth himself again with the affairs of this life. See, we are in this world, but we are not of the world. We still live. We still got to eat. We still got to pay our bills. We still going to have to pay the IRS. We're in this world, but we are not of this world. We don't do what the people of the world do. We don't, get, we don't go crazy like they do when, because they have no peace. But we are with the peace keep the peace giver. We have peace. We know what to do when we're having issues and problems and troubles. We know we get on our face and we 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 fast and pray. No man that warth entangleth himself again with the affairs of this life. I'm bored, so I'm going out to the club. No man that warth that is a good soldier for Jesus Christ entangleth himself again. Again, with the affairs of this life. Well, I haven't, stim I haven't been stimulated in a while, so I'm just going to click real quick and get a real fast look. No man that warreth entangleth himself again with the affairs of this life. You done cut pornography off, let it stay off. No man that warreth, that is a soldier for Christ, is going to go back and entangle himself again with the affairs of this life. He got you clean, you're clean. Stop going to the, the mud. Or do you just want to be a pig? Because we ain't going to run out the pigs. But the Bible says pig tramples stuff underfoot. We don't go back to entangle ourselves again with the affairs of this life. That we may please him who have chosen us to be a what? A soldier. The Bible says that if he chose us, we are to be soldiers. What, now, what if we got weak soldiers that's trying to fight in the, in the, uh, in our, in our, uh, in the U.S. Army, but they weak? I'm, I'm too scared to fight. That's these cats who's, who's, who, who's these terrorist cats here on this land. They, they won't be terrorists. They don't want to fight. And I'm gonna show you. I'm gonna tell you why they don't want to fight. I, I didn't get to put in that message wars and rumors of wars. When Trump, when Trump did, I'm getting off, when Trump did, uh, say, bomb the Iranian general, uh, what is the, uh, the guy with the, they, they all wearing the haircut, what's it, Spencer, uh, what's his name, uh, the white guy, the, the terrorist, they, he's the one that got them wearing khakis, and the, uh, he's a white supremacist, outright. yeah, outright, uh, his last name is Spencer, is it Ricky Spencer, no? Richard Spencer. Well, when, when, tr when Trump authorized the bombing, immediately Richard Spencer got on because they don't want to go to war. He got on in the internet, social media, and said, I'm sorry, he said, I'm sorry to all of my followers for having y'all to follow this man, and he, he's wanting to go to war. I thought y'all want a war. Y'all keep talking about a civil war. See, they want to they have the upper hand and try to fight us, but they ain't going to win no way. But they don't want to go to war with some real enemies. They don't want to fight. They don't want to get their feet up off this land. They just want to terrorize. So anyway, so what if we had some, some cats in the military? They, oh, I don't, I'm scared to fight. What you join up for? <laughs> so if you join the God, then you are, you're going to have to be a good soldier. And now if you scare going back out there to the world, let the world beat you down a little bit, and then when you come back, you will learn how to be a good soldier. Because we can't hold your hand to be a good soldier. We can't keep you saved. You, that's something you got to want. So what are we? Soldiers. Amen. Good soldiers. Amen. Good soldiers. <laughs> Amen. Let's go to verse 5. And if a man also strive for mastery, yet is he not crowned, except he strive lawfully. I'm going to read that out of the Amplified too. And if anyone enters comp competitive games, he is not crowned unless he completes lawfully, fairly, according to the rules laid down. <clears throat> Let me give you a example to explain this to explain this verse <coughs> the Chinese swimmer Sun Yang y'all just heard about this right it just broke news two days I'll be up on look y'all I'm, I'm a world news watcher 
I don't, I don't know what's going on locally, but I know what's going on in the world. Sun Yang, he's a Chinese swimmer. <clears throat> he has just been banned for eight years for violating the anti-doping rules. He was striving for mastery. Mastery means, <coughs> com meaning, meaning you completed the skill set. He was striving for, for mastery and in, in winning, but was doing it unlawfully because he was taking drugs to enhance his performance. So verse 5 says, and if a man strive for masteries, yet is not crowned, except he strive lawfully. So this cat here was stri he was getting gaining mastery, but he was doing it unlawfully because he was taking performance enhancements to, to stroke better, Sw swimming stroking. <laughs> and he was beating, he was the fastest of everybody. But he was doing it, he was cheating, he was doing it unlawfully. And so they had to ban this cat because the Olympics that we may not have ever again <laughs> is coming up. Amen. So, uh, but he, you know, but so that's what that verse means. <clears throat> Let's go to six. The husband, the husband man that labor, laboreth must be first partaker of the fruits. Oh, this, the, the people, people overlook this, her scripture. I'm going to read that out of the Amplified since King James is too hard to understand. <laughs> it is the hard working farmer who labors to produce who must be the first partaker of the fruits. Oh, they broke it down good enough when the Amplified. But Christians, most Christians today can't handle this. They, get, they said they done left church because the pastor got too much. They send the, they send the now. They, they don't know the then. <laughs> this verse right here is why most people get offended at a pastor and say that's why they have left the church. They overlook the scripture, the scriptures because they have been taught a pastor shouldn't have no money or like nice things. But what does the Bible says. What does the Bible say? What does that scripture say? The husband man that laboreth must be first partakers of the fruit. Amen. They the, don't look at where they are now. It took a long time to get to the now. It's just like I then. Oh man, we what, what no paychecks coming in. We had to take from our house to pay the church bills. And I was some, uh, unhappy a whole lot of years. <laughs> but the noun is, uh, I get a check. The, the people get checks now in the church. And just because their pastors get, of course he's going to make more money. He's the one that's ministering the word. <laughs> the Bible says he's supposed to partake of the first fruits. But people are offended that his first fruit is greater than theirs. Two different levels, baby. And then they get mad on how he spends. He chooses to spend his first fruits. Is this money? Like, who, we ain't get mad at you when you went out and went to the mall and spent your money. But they mad because his first fruits is greater. And he can spend better. <laughs> like, like, how you going to go on the, to the doctor's office and get mad at the doctor because he makes more than you? He's the husband man of that field. You didn't look at his then when he had to do college. What, four years of college, then med school? Four, thank, thank you, Sister Ariane. She's a mad, she's about to go to the med school. For, what, what you say? She's graduating in a couple of months. Four years of college, then what? Four years of medical school, and then X amounts of residencies. So she gonna be making good money when she gets her your, your D, D, is it D, MD, I said, I was about to say DM, MD. <laughs> and her first fruits are going to be great. Shoot. Yeah. Sure. Y'all better know scripture. Shoot. Sure. <laughs> she said, back here saying, yeah. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Let's go to, um, but yeah, but so people get mad at that verse. 
So Paul had to add in the next verse for all those that still couldn't receive the scripture. The next verse says, consider what I, am, what I say, and the Lord give the understanding in all things. <laughs> so if you're still struggling over that, the Lord is going to give the understanding. You can't, you can't lean to your understanding and be like, they, they stealing from the widows and orphans. Please, you ain't giving nobody nothing. But they won't say they stealing from No, he get a paycheck. He get a paycheck because he got paid the IRS too. I know I got paid the IRS every year. I don't get no money back. Like, dang, y'all just, y'all just want all y'all money from me, huh? And they be like, yep. Like, I'm going to give it to y'all. <laughs> I'm gonna give it to y'all cause they can sh they can freeze your assets. <laughs> they the only people that can truck you, and you can't say nothing. You like, dang, I don't like y'all, but I'm, I'm gonna pay y'all though. <laughs> and I tell them all the time, I don't owe them nothing but love. I'm gonna give, I'm gonna write this check to them. <laughs> I don't want to be on y'all payment plan, but sometimes I gotta be on y'all payment plan. <laughs> hey Amen. So let's go to verse eight. Remember that Jesus Christ is the seed of David who, raised, who, who was raised from the dead according to my gospel. Wherein, where, where, wherein I suffer trouble as an evildoer even unto bonds. See, they're going to call you an evildoer because you're bringing light. You're sharing the gospel and they're going to call you evil. You ain't killed nobody, cussed nobody out, told nobody, told nobody out. Gave nobody a piece of your mind because we don't give a piece of our mind. We need all of our mind there. But you're going to be called the evildoer because you stirring up, you stirring up them, them demons that are like, I got control over her. And so the people going to get mad and call you the evildoer. So when Paul went in to preach, they said, he's an evildoer. Amen. So, and, uh, and he's like, I'm in bonds. But the word of God is not bound. 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 Whatever you do, wherever you go, the word of God is not bound. Even though people try to bind the word, the word of God is not bound. Amen. Amen. Now I'm going to talk about the effectiveness of an evangelist, minister, exhorter, however you want to say it. I'm going to talk about the effectiveness of this. The effectiveness... <coughs> The word effectiveness means the degree to which something is successful in producing a desired result or success. Today in northern Nigeria, <coughs> today in northern Nigeria, Christians are being persecuted and killed just because they chose to serve God in the name of Jesus. Persecution is happening, y'all, all over the world. All in great, I'm, I ju I'm just talking about two different ethnic groups, but it's happening all over the world. <coughs> there are today, uh, so I said that in northern Nigeria, Christians are being persecuted and killed just because they choose to serve God in the name of Jesus. There's an article out right now talking about the uh, deafening silence. See, when I try to talk about this stuff, people won't write in. You shouldn't be talking about this stuff. What you mean? This is going on. Because I'm talking about it on a different level with us here in America, with the white evangelicals in the Christian church. They separate. I, ain't, I don't even consider them Christians. They evangelicals. Because they, they, they ain't talking about no God. They talking about the, the racism. Um, but anyways. When I was talked about the, uh, when I did the message on the deflection of the white, you shouldn't be saying that. What you mean? This is going on. What you mean? Like, God is speaking to me. I'm seeing what he's telling me to say. You shouldn't be talking about it. Oh, we should, we supposed to show the love. Man, I'm showing love. I ain't got to accept evil. And I ain't saying all Christ, all white people, because some of them ain't. I'm talking about the evil jellicles. They are a whole different group of people. Okay, so anyways, so this this an article out saying talking about the definitely definite deafening deafening silence uh, of the Nigerian Christians uh, of, that's being killed because they are black. We don't hear that on the news. We hear about the persecuted Christians in China. We hear the, hear about the persecuted Christians in other parts of the world. Well, we're not hearing about this in Nigeria, northern Nigeria, where the, um, 
Oh, I had the name of these people. Uh, it's in northern Nigeria. The uh, Fulani, I think it's I think it's them. They're killing. They're Muslims, and they're killing um, the Nigerians. Let me see. I'm trying to find their name while I, I can't find their name while I'm reading. But the the but the priest was reaching out. I'm gonna read some of this. What this this black priest is saying. Uh, he was saying, his uh, every day says Father Joseph Batru Fidelis. Uh, okay, he's a priest. He's a Catholic priest. You need Jesus. Y'all better come up out of that Catholic church. But they trying to serve God. But that's the Catholic people got to them before the Protestants did. Okay, so anyways, he's writing the churches saying, we need for the Europeans to come in to help us. He was like, we were like, we're, he's writing the, the, the people saying we need, uh, he was like, because our government is not helping us. They're not helping us fight these terrorists that's killing us, that's killing my people. They're killing a certain people in northern uh, Nigeria. Uh, but he was like, we need the European, we need the support and intervention of European governments. It's therefore necessary, otherwise we risk extermination our people are suffering so much please help us not to please help us not to be silent in the face of this immense extermination that is taking place in silence and so they're trying to get the word out to try to get the news reporters to report about these terrorists killing these black Christians but nobody won't say nothing about that so um uh, okay. Our government said that the Christians that they want. Okay, I, I read that. Let me put Nigeria on the. Okay, so our government said that we want to. The, the, their goal, they said that they was Christians and they want to help the Christians that's in persecution flee from these countries. That's what they said. That, that, that's, I don't know if y'all know that, but that's what they said. And that they would give visas to these Christians that need to get out of these countries. Well, our government. Just put Nigeria, Nigeria, on the travel ban where they can't, they cannot get asylum in America. And people will say, why would y'all put Nigeria on the travel? What did they do? They don't want these black Christians coming in this country. And they said that I told y'all they ain't Christians. But they don't put Nigeria on the travel ban. So these black Christians that's being killed for being a Christian for the gospel of Jesus Christ. They ain't got no help. The other European countries ain't helping them. Nobody's helping them. So let me move off of that because persecution ain't just with them. It's all over. Oh, an estimated 1,000 Nigerian Christian believers were murdered in 2019 alone for their faith. For their faith. Now don't tell me they ain't being good soldiers. These cats are being good soldiers. They are dying they are not renouncing Christ. And these cats in America can't even show up for a Sunday service. Don't show up for prayer, but calling themselves, I'm a Christian, I'm saved. You a lie. Bye. Amen. Some 6,000 of them have been killed since 2015. And yet they still have not renounced Christ. Good soldier stuff. Good soldier stuff. Christian persecution in China. We hear about that all the time. Since, I'm trying to say this name properly. Since Sinisi, Sinisi religion policy, which demands the communist party. I want y'all to listen to me. Which demands the communist, communist party actively guide other religions to be compatible with the socialism and implement measures to sense Sinisi, the religion, to foster patriotism. I, I'm going to read y'all some stuff. All, religion, all religious believers in China are required to let the party lead. I mean, y'all look, this stuff is going on right here in America. Let the party lead. Patriotism. Just because this patriotism don't mean it's a God thing. Hitler them had patriotism for the Nazi party. And if you didn't get down with them, they was going to turn on you. 
we just seeing a resurgence of, they, they, they just changed their name, but it's a resurgence of the same thing. So let me finish reading here. Uh, so they, want, they said the, uh, all the, you're required to let the party lead. Listen to the party. Are we not seeing that now? Listen to the party. One party. Listen to the party. And walk behind the party. Did we not just see that? This is why that man wasn't impeached. Because they got in line with evil, stood together with evil, and walked behind the party. Evilly. And uh, let me finish here. As a result, many government-sanctioned churches, government-sanctioned churches, we just like a, a snap away from that here. Because these cats who say that they Christians, they can implement, well, if you ain't for the party, then you ain't a good, you ain't a good church. You ain't a Christian church like our Christian church. We just a step away from him here. So, let me find my place again. So as a result, many government-sanctioned churches began their services. This is how they, if they're a government-sanctioned church in China, they begin their services by singing patriotic songs. Oh, wow. Ain't no difference, huh? These cats, uh, I, uh, uh, what's that song? I stand for America, the red country of the red. I'm, so, so, I, so I proudly stand up. God bless the USA. They doing this in churches now. Ain't no, look, y'all, ain't no difference. Patriotism over God. They doing this in China. They making them have patriotism over God. They can't have, they can't serve God the way they want to serve God. They got to have patriotism and for, backed by what the government said they should do and then they'll be considered a church. Let me finish reading here. So they have to sing, uh, they have to start their church service, not in worship, they can't have worship, they gotta sing a patriot songs. What, but when they're start, starting their service. In praising the communist party. Oh, wow. Praising the communist party. They doing this now, praising a certain party over here. Praising a certain party. In the motherland, they doing this. The motherland. I, was, I just saw this uh, T-shirt because of they still try fighting this man, Colin Ka Kaepernick. At the years I told you a black man is powerful. One black man, God can use just one black man. He changed the world. So they still fighting this black man. So as I'm getting this order, I'm, as I'm uh, getting this stuff off of this website, uh, they had this shirt on there. We, we, um, we stand, wait a minute, we, we stand with the flag and bow our knee to God, or something like that, they will say. It's like, so, so y'all, it shows y'all in the same thing. Y'all just, y'all just trying to call out China, but y'all into the same thing because they worship this flag. They don't worship no God. They ain't pledge no allegiance to God. They too evil. They hard. It's too evil. Amen. Okay, so let me finish reading here. <clears throat> so, then they, uh, and, and then they got to praise the motherland, followed by the bowing to the giant portraits of Z. What, what's his last name? I think I'm saying it wrong. The president of China. Z, X, I, and it ain't Xi, but the, they got to bow to his portrait. This is why that, that, that man went off when people started uh, protesting and the uh, Americans started speaking out against him. He was trying to uh, say, the America, oh, if, if y'all keep talking, we're going to remove y'all businesses from over here. Because they don't believe you can have rights. And our government's getting there, too. They don't want you to have rights. So anyway, so many believers are so repulsed by such uh, compulsion, com compulsions com that they choose to worship in house churches. China has more than one million Christians today. More, they have Christians who are secretly meeting together, got to pray in tongues under their breath, still faithful to a holy God. They ain't got no issue with what color, whatever color he is. We need him. Still loving a God, still ain't turned away, even though they are 
under much more dictatorship and scrutiny than we are in America. They're still meeting, gathering weekly or daily, meeting together, choosing not to go to the government-sanctioned churches because you know China, they, the government-sanctioned churches, they got listening devices, they got the, the facial recognition wow. in the church, the government-sanctioned churches. And if they meet together, that's why most of the time they can't, they can't even talk. They just got to worship God in their mind. And these people still serving God. Soldier stuff. Soldier stuff. Endure hardship as a good soldier. And they still won't turn away, even though they can die. They can get locked up at any time. I'm going to read you about this pastor. Like Soldier stuff. Let me finish. I'm trying to see if I add it in, in here. So, and let me finish reading here so I can. Okay. So, China, I said they have one million Christians today. China's Christian population is on track to grow, to grow to 250 million by 2030. This pastor who chose to have a house church. Now, you know these Chinese men, little short and little men? They ain't trying to kill nobody. <laughs> so on December the 9th, last, I believe it was 2018, uh, that they locked this pastor up. He had more than 100 members, and their church was called the Early Rain Covenant Church. Now, these people got power now. They got power. Their power is greater than most of these churches here in America because they living for God. Pastor Wang's home was raided and ransacked, ransacked by police. The raid may have, tri have been triggered by a 7,300 words manifesto titled Meditations uh, on the Religious War. This pastor wrote a, he was like, I'm going to write a letter. Because he said, I'm not going to, no matter what, I'm going to serve my God. And he wrote this letter because he, he knew, he said, the day is going to come when they're going to come and lock me up and I'm going to die. That didn't stop him from being a pastor. Amen. He was, because he's like, I'm a Christian, I'm a soldier, I'm sold out for my God. Amen. And they got mad when they found out he wrote this letter. And he wrote that ideology is morally in incompatible with the Christian faith and those who uphold freedoms of the mind and the thought. He wrote, I, I, I wrote, well, the letter's long. I was going to print it out, but I, my, it wouldn't print out for me. But he wrote this letter. Uh, the, he, the letter was titled, My Declaration of Faithful Disobedience. I told you you don't always be obedient be, just because it's authority. When it goes against God and God's word, then I will be faithfully disobedient to stand with my God. Amen. He wrote this letter, my declaration of faithful disobedience. And, they, and he said, if I, he said, he told the people in his church, if I ever get locked up and I'm not out in 48 hours, release this letter. And he's been locked up since December the 9th of last year. So they released the letter. Now, when you get locked up in China, you can't go see your loved ones. His wife and his family ain't been able to see him since he's been locked up. But they, now they just sentenced this man to eight years. Eight years for being a Christian. For not worshiping the president of China. For saying I love Jesus more and I'm willing to die for my Jesus. He got eight years. And guess what his family said? We glad to know that he got eight years because at least now we know he's alive. They ain't seen this man since. See, if you're dead, they ain't going to hold a trial and give you time. But they said now we know he's alive. At least we know he's alive. He got eight years for, being, for preaching this here. That's how you know I'm a Christian. My Bible's well worn and torn. It's still good. I can't throw it away. This is... It, it goes wherever I need it to go. I can find wherever I need. But for preaching this her, he got eight years for being a Christian. How many people were in here today will go to jail for Jesus? Amen. Thank you. I will. Amen. That's the time going to jail. Like, uh, uh, baby, I'm in jail for Jesus. I ain't stole nothing. 
I'm in jail for Jesus. Now, since I'm here, I'm going to preach the gospel. <laughs> Girl, you know Jesus. When well, when you come off your high, I'm going to tell you about them. Because <laughs> they, they drunk, they stinking, them peed on themselves. I used to work at the jail. I know this stuff, y'all. And it's like when you come off, at that, off your high and your Thorazine, I'm going to talk to you before you're going get, to get your, another, your other Thorazine pill. Because they, they be wanting to see the psychiatrist because they want them pills. Like, hey, I won't be high again. Like, well, let me tell you about Jesus then. And they going to listen because everybody, everybody get religious when they go jail. They going to listen. <laughs> and then that's when you do some laying on hands. Oh, you ain't hold spirit filled yet? Come here. Let me. I'm going to try to get your spirit filled. We ain't got nothing but time anyway. Might as well see if the power's going to work. <laughs> they, they coming down off they half, they heard one half. Shoot, they might just believe. They might just be that open and believe because they can't get a fix no way. Well, let's get a fix of the Holy Ghost. <laughs> Amen. So anyways, so this pastor, he wrote this letter, and they was like, oh, my God, this man, even in the face of death, he was like, oh, I can't, I had all this stuff this morning, but I can't, you know how when you're reading stuff, you're like, oh, I'm going to highlight that, I'm going to mark it, and you can't find it now that you're trying to talk and read at the same time. It's hard, you can't. But anyways, but a great man, and I'm a, let me tell you his name again, so if y'all want to go research him. Wang Yai. W-A-N-G-Y-I. Yai? Yeah, I guess that's Yi. Wang Yi. <laughs> Pastor Wang Yi. And read his letter that he wrote. And people are just amazed, like, oh, my God. Like, like he was like, my declaration of faithful disobedience. Like, I'm going to stand for my God no matter what, even if it means the end of my life. So, like I said, China is, uh, even though, see, persecution is happening. It's ha and the Ch Chinese government thinking that if we, our governments, whenever you ever you saw persecutions of Christians, they thought if we, I don't want to get ahead of myself because I put it in here. So let me finish reading here. So, so, um. So China's Christian population is on track to grow 250 million by 2030. People think that when they kill these Christian, Christians that it's going to silence their voices. In the message of Jesus Christ, uh, but when, you, when people are persecuted for Christ, they think, and I'm going to silence them. That's why in Acts. When, 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 when they got spirit filled and they was on one accord in the, in the Sadducees and the Pharisees, the, those Hebrew words are like cats from the streets got mad when they saw, what? Unity? They spirit filled. They getting an instant download. We can't manipulate them with scripture no more. They started persecuting the church. That's when they killed Stephen. They killed Stephen because Stephen hit them with scripture. And he was Holy Spirit filled doing it. And it convicted their heart, not that they repented. They was like, how he going to tell us something? But they stoned him. They stoned him. And while Stephen was getting stoned, he lifted up his eyes and saw glory and said, Father, forgive them of their sin. You know he was, he was at peace because we wouldn't have said that. We'd be like, God, judge them. I'm going to still die, but judge them. But Stephen died. And then when that happened, Paul them gave was Saul. He was Saul at the time. They, they, they went to the, to the church, to these sects, to get a decree from the priest to say, if we find any of them in this way, that's because they was called the way then. If we find any of them, whether it be men or women, we can lock them up, charge them with a crime. Uh, the crime for what? Serving God, getting the Holy Spirit filled, calling on, they was mad because they calling on this name of Jesus. So, with, and so it started a, a per, a, the persecution, which made the people run. But as they running, they doing, they evangelizing. Philip, going down to Samaria and doing what? Preaching Christ to the people. Evangelism, minister, exhorting, preaching. That's all he did. But them persecuting the people caused the gospel to spread more. 
them persecuting the Nigerian Christians, causing the gospel to spread more. They say, they, they, we, we killing them, and they ain't going to stop serving this Jesus. The Chinese government still killing the people and locking them up and torturing them. Muslims, they ain't just doing the Christians, they doing Muslims. They got an internment camp for Muslims. The, I think it's called Augur Muslims, A-U-G-A-R, Augur Muslims. I, I, it might be a K in there. But they, they, they uh, 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 organ harvesting these people because they don't have no right because they continue to want to be Muslims. And they taking these people's organs, keeping them, and they calling the camps uh, re, re, uh, what's the word, re-education camps that they gonna try to do her ain't nothing new under the sun all because these people won't stop serving who they say they gonna serve they doing the Christians like that too but when they do persecution it never it never stops what the people sharing because that's what as Christians we are taught love your love your life not unto death so those who are alive, okay, I'm just about to say this. So persecution only spreads the gospel of Jesus Christ. Those who are alive say, those who are alive and receiving that word from somebody, they say within themselves, I want to know and experience the love of their God that even in the face of death, they love not their lives. They didn't fear death. The Bible says in Revelation 6 and 9, I'm going to read that to you. You can turn there if you would like, but I'm going to read that. Revelation 6 and 9. The Bible says in Revelation 6 and 9, and, and, when, we, and when he had opened the fifth seal, I saw under the altar the what? The souls of them, the souls of them which were what? which were slain for the word. Whose word? God's word. God's word. And for the testimony which they held. They held on to their testimony no matter what. No matter what. In the face of death, there comes a point to where you're not scared of death. Oh, death words just sting. The Bible says that they can, they can kill this body, but they can't kill your soul. Your soul is going to live forever in glory if you become a good soldier. Amen? So let me finish reading here. I'm going to read that again. And when, he, and when he had opened the fifth seal, I saw under the altar the souls of them that were slain for the word of God and for the testimony which they held. And they cried with a loud voice. So these soldiers are still soldiers up under the altar. They cried with a loud voice. They weren't talking all sweet and innocent. Oh, no, they cried with a loud voice, saying, How long, O Lord, holy and true, doest thou not judge and avenge our blood on them that dwell where? On the earth. On the earth. On the earth. So those who are persecuting Christians all over the world, that's going to be a judgment. And those who are, whose souls are up under the altar, because they ain't dead. They only can kill the body, but your soul lives forever. Those souls, those souls who are now colorless, whether they was white in the body, black in the body, Chinese in the body, any other ethnic group, if they die for Jesus the Christ, and they kept the testimony, and they loved their God, these are the souls that's up under the altar. So y'all who watching online, y'all can come up off of that. Only black people is going up. No, baby. Those who love God and have, and have uh, held to the testimony of Jesus the Christ, you can't have no hate in your heart, whether you white, black, Chinese, or Mexican. Amen? So, those, so those souls under the, the altar are crying out. They still they crying out daily. Forever and never. They ain't got nothing but eternity. And God is hearing they cry. How long, oh God? How long? Until you avenge our blood on them that dwell on the earth. 
in what robes? White robes were given unto every one of them. And it was said unto them that they should rest yet a little season until the what? Until the fellow servants also and the brethren that should be killed as they were should be fulfilled. So this scripture is telling us, love not your life unto death. If you die, hold, hold your testimony. You're going to live for eternity. Amen. Amen. You ain't missing nothing. I mean, we alive. Thank God we alive. But if it, if it came down to it, God, I'm a whole fast. Because you're going to be greeted. Amen. You, at least I know I ain't going to hell. Amen. I know that by the way. I, Lord, I done served you faithfully. My life was for you. I didn't compromise. I know I ain't going to see hell. I'm confident in that. Now, if you ain't confident, you got to be scared. Shoot. <laughs> I'm confident. I live for you, Father. And they so confident, they say, they hollering out. They crying out with a loud voice. They confident. We served you, Father. How long it's going to be until you avenge our blood on them that's on the earth? Because these cats up here doing stuff, playing God. Okay, so let me finish reading here. So the Bible, oh, I read that in Revelation, and this is why the word of God is still not bound. The word, that, now we can go back to uh, 2 Timothy. The word of God is not bound. I was reading verse, uh, at, I'm just at nine. But the word of God is not bound. Nobody can bind the word of God. They can kill your body, but you can't bind the word. The word is still going to go forth. Amen. No government, no, no authoritarian, no president, no priest, no law or decree. No man or woman can bind the word of God. It's still going to go forth. Even after you long and gone because they thought by killing you it was going, they was going to silence the gospel. The gospel ain't silenced, baby. They killed Jesus over 2,000 years ago, and the word is still going forth strong. And the Bible says if the devil would have knew what he did, that killing him, he wouldn't have messed with Jesus. But it was a God set up for him to do that because the word had to go forth. The, there, has to, that had, there had to be a remission of sins. Amen? Now let's go to verse 10. Therefore I endure all things for the elect's sake, that they may also obtain the salvation which is in Christ Jesus with eternal glory. It is a faithful saying that if we be dead with him, we shall also live with him. See, you ain't dead. De death ain't death. You just sleep. You just, this body goes back to the earth, but you ain't dead. If we suffer, we shall also what? Reign with him. If we deny him, what? He's going to deny you. So if you, you're like, I don't know Jesus. I ain't, okay. When he see you, I don't know that cat. He going to deny you. You can't be like, Jesus, well, have mercy. He had mercy. But you chose to deny his mercy. If we believe not, yet he abideth faithful, he cannot deny himself. So you, the, the, the scripture is saying, you ain't got to believe, but Jesus is still faithful. He's still going to be Jesus, no matter if you believe or not. Ain't that what people say? I don't believe in God. I don't believe. Okay, you ain't got to believe, but you can't knock his existence. He's still faithful. How I know? Because I'm right. I'm a witness. He's faithful. So let me, uh, let's finish reading her. Of these things, put them in remembrance, charging them before the Lord that they strive not about words to, to no profit, but to, but to the subverting of the hearers. Subverting means to undermine the power of authority. So when you have people wanting to come in the church and or hear about scripture, they trying to subvert, trying to undermine the power and the authority of the person speaking. You got to know what words mean. It's like, you uh, get on out of here. We ain't got nothing. We ain't, no, we ain't, we ain't with all that. We ain't, we ain't got to do all that. If you don't receive, don't receive. Bye. 
Like, we ain't going to strive. The Bible says strive with no man. Like, we ain't, we, we can't win you, bruh. Bye. Like, well, it, it ain't no, trying to save you ain't hard. Like, if you don't receive, okay, what does the Bible say? Kick the dust off. Well, you, yeah, you're supposed to be a Christian. The Bible says kick the dust off if you don't receive. Jesus kicked the dust off when these cats, when they kept coming to him, he was hitting them with truth. And so he kicked the dust off and called them vipers to their face. And they talked about Jesus was all soft. No, he wasn't. He kept talking crazy to them to the point to where they was wanting to kill him. And Jesus like, I don't like, I don't like y'all no way. So let me go and tell y'all the truth. Y'all going to do me in anyway. So I might as well tell you the truth. You can't lie. The Bible says, <laughs> let, 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 uh, let your yes be yes and your no's no. Don't be messing with Jesus because he going to let his yes be yes and his no, no. And so if he did it, I got to do the same thing. But I might have to run, but I got to do the same thing. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Let me finish reading here. So of these things, put them in remembrance, charging them before the Lord that they strive not about words to the prophet, but to the but to the subverting of the hearers. Study. Who should study? We, you, me, he, she, everybody. Even the kids can study. <laughs> study to show that self approved unto whom? Unto God. A workman that needeth not be ashamed. If you're going to be a Christian, you need not be ashamed. You better, that's why you got to study to show yourself approved. How somebody, how these street people is like cats going to know more scripture than you do? Like you're supposed to study to show yourself approved. Because when they think they walking up on the dumb Christian, and you open up your, like, ah, I ain't with all that. I these, I these Jehovah Witnesses. See, when you start, when you know scripture, you be like, oh, you won't talk? You don't want to talk now. Well, quit coming over my house. <laughs> Now they know you a real Christian. They, gonna knock, they ain't going to knock on your... You ain't got a hat in your own house no more. <laughs> Put a sign on the door. I'm a real Christian. I know scripture. We're going to leave them alone. They, they want to share with you. But then, no, no, let me share first then. No, see, when we, we can't receive that. But then leave me alone. Go on, go on that way. And kick the dust. I'm going to kick the dust off, of y'all, off my feet on y'all too. Go on away from me. Okay, so let me finish here. Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needed not be ashamed. What? Rightfully dividing the word. Rightfully. That's why you got to be in a congregation and be taught right. Be up under uh, true, uh, true teaching. Because people be dis, they, they don't be dividing. Like, that ain't what that meant. Like, where, where you get that from? Like, oh, I, I felt in my spirit. I don't care. That ain't what that meant. They just be all wrong. Like that couple that drove down, from, that drove up from, uh, from Atlanta, thinking that they called, they said God told them to come up here and resurrect Pastor Dorf. God ain't told y'all that. And because they didn't rightfully divide the word, they got in here and got rebuked. Now, we, wasn't, we didn't even have to do it, Steve. Jordan DeWine handled that. And they mad because they, uh, they anointing wasn't received. I told them, don't drive up here. I said, don't you come up. Don't, don't, don't come. I said, you come pray with us. And they going to try to send the word. I like, I don't care what y'all say. Y'all still ain't rightfully dividing the word. That's witchcraft. But it ain't going to work on us because we know too much word. It's like, go on. Y'all, y'all got open rebuke and still getting open rebuke for what y'all did. Don't ever come like that again. People, people will try you. They think you don't know nothing. Like, baby, you just don't know what I know. I might be a woman wear heels, but you don't know what I know. I've been taught some stuff, and I ain't backing down. Uh, y'all, y'all, y'all see a, 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 a pastor's wife been locked up because she done fought and I, uh, up in the church. I, I'm going to stand my ground to the end. And I get on the news. Yeah, I did it. They came wrong. Like, you come in here with respect. If Donald Trump wants to come in here, Donald, you come in here with respect. Because if I come to the White House, I'm going to respect you. And you don't come up in here wrong. And y'all, if your secret service come in here wrong, y'all going to get dealt with. Now, y'all come in here with respect now. 
Because I ain't going to come in your house and disrespect you. Respect is respect. And it works. Like, shoot. Yeah, they're going to put some charges on me. <laughs> but they're going to realize, oh, we should have respected her. Like, uh, she, just because she's a woman don't mean she weak. Now, I'm, I'm physically good. Physically, I'm weaker than a man. But I got some spiritual strength now. Like, you come right. And they like, well, who told you that? Pastor Steve Dorby. And if he was alive, he would be like, hey, we get them there. <laughs> you respect. Okay, let me get finished here. So, but shun profane and vain babblings. When people won't come up to you with some vain babblings, I know Pastor Steve was saying, uh, uh, I think it was the message we just uploaded about the guy came to the church and wanted to, after Bible study, want let's go study the Bible. It's like, man, they, he don't like that unlearn learn these Negro babblings in, in prison. <laughs> the Bible says shun profane and vain babblings. They just babbling. They ain't living none of what they think they know. I'm a, oh, Lord, I, did the woman, somebody commented, and I thought it was good. I forgot what video the woman commented on, black woman. She said, watching Pastor Dorby has brought me back to God. I went off into the Hebrew Israelite stuff, the street cat stuff. She said, but the way they treated women was so horrible and bad. She said, oh, no, she walked away from God to go into that and then got into that and seen it was vain babblings. Vain babblings, profane. These cats' mouths are just profane but trying to spit scripture. But the Bible says, how can bitter water and sweet water, uh, bitter water and sweet water come out of the same fountain? This should not be. But they trying to teach some scripture and cursing. You, ain't, you don't know no God. So she said she got off and left, left the sanctity and the safety of church and go into this and, and got busted by these Negro babblings that they don't know no scripture. And then on top of it, they, girl, uh, if we sleep together, you my wife. That's what they believe. They ain't putting no ring on nothing. Because they're like, oh, that ain't what scripture say. If we just sleep together, you my wife. Well, nigga, well, what? Bring me in your home. No, nah, we're going to live off your section eight. <laughs> this cat got all kind of felonies on him. So she got off into that stuff and realized this is a bunch of foolishness. And she said, the way they treat you, <laughs> the way they treat you, she was like, what did I do? So she said, I came across Pastor Dory's messages and came, brought my righteous butt back to the church. And, and let me say this real quick, too, for all y'all who's getting into some, some stuff online. He would say this to me when he was alive. He was like, Missy, I hate introducing stuff to him because they get off. He said, they get, he said, this is what they do. He said, this is what pastors got to combat every week. They members not being content with the gospel, getting off into some stuff, watching them, watching this, and adding some vain babblings profane stuff to the knowledge of Christ thinking that they know something now they now they got a they sick in their spirit yesterday I was eating breakfast I said oh I want me some coffee made me some coffee had me a pop tart it's warm and I'm and so I took out my yogurt and I said wait a minute I can't eat this yogurt what's the yogurt gonna do it's gonna upset your stomach but this is what most Christians look like mixing Christian gospel the gospel with some stuff they don't found online. Ooh, I like this teacher too. Ooh, I like this too. Then you look sick in the spirit. You, you don't even know your stomach is, your spirit is upset. Because you don't you added all this stuff into you. And, it's like, and, and this is what this man was saying when he was alive. He said, Missy, this is what pastors got to constantly deal with. The members not being content in the word and in church and in their home. But they going online eating other stuff. And they sick. He said, and you stand back, you stand up here and you look at him, looking at him, you sick. Sick in the spirit. But it's like, why can't y'all just be happy with the gospel? I'm like, man, I'm happy with this. I ain't feasting. Look, I ain't hungry. I don't go eat off of other people's plate. I'm good. I am good. I got what I need. 
unless it's, it's a well-known person, a well-known. I ain't getting off into finding somebody other somewhere. Well, ooh, I like how they did. I don't care who you are. What's your foundation? Foundation is important. All right, now let me get back in here because we need to, <laughs> we need to stop. And I ain't even got no word. Lord, Jesus. Let me see. Okay, I got, oh, this is my last page. Okay. So, okay, what did I stop? Okay. But shun profane and vain babblings, for they will increase unto more what? Ungodliness. And the word will eat as doeth a canker, to whom high hymenaeus in Philetus, Philetus, who concerning the truth have erred. You err when you start eating on other stuff. You don't, you don't know how to handle that. You, you're not even mature enough to eat the fish and spit out the bones. Because some of this stuff got some word bones, got some stuff added to it, and you just accepted it all because you're like, ooh, I like that. And you eating all kind of stuff. Who have erred saying that the resurrection is past already and overthrown the faith of some. So you bring your sick spirit up in church, overthrowing others, saying, ooh, girl, go watch them. They, ooh, they, they have some good stuff to talk about. And then before we know it, we got a coronavirus up in the church. Right. Out for one person. And that's why we get more them, more them, than with them cats. So her, let me finish here. Lord Jesus, I ain't mean to go this way, but it needed to be said, so... <laughs> God knows. Okay, let me find my place here. What, where am I at? I don't, okay, I done turned the page and forgot where I was. Nevertheless, the foundation of God standing, standeth sure, having this seal. The Lord knoweth them that are his. The Lord knows them that are his. And let everyone that nameth the name of Christ, what? Let everyone that nameth the name of Christ depart from iniquity. So if you're saying, I'm a Christian, can you still be a fornicator? No. If you say, I'm a Christian, can you still boost? No. I seen a girl yesterday, a black girl got caught. I said, girl, I said, see, and the police had her outside. Just like, girl, you and your Courtney Jackie Chow going to jail. You shouldn't have boost. Now tax season is here. I know you done gave somebody the name of your kids to get some money. You ain't have to boost. All you have to do is wait for some, your tax money. And plus, it's the first of the month. This is not a good time for you to be getting locked up. Right. You got some money coming in. Now your butt's going to jail. And they kept your butt outside to show everybody right <laughs> in that parking lot that your butt is going. You just don't went in there. What's that store that you went in the boost from? City Trend. City Trend. You going to boost out of City Trend? Like, Really? All right, you going to jail. And I, she looked at me, and I'm like, girl, you going to jail. <laughs> I'm like, let me go get my gas. You going to jail. You can't help a black person when they wrong. That's right. It's like, uh-uh, the police is just. Police officers, y'all just in your job right now. You done stole something. Okay, so let me finish reading here. Let the Lord not let them, let every man that nameth the name of Christ depart from iniquity. You cannot continue to be a sinner and be a Christian. It's an oxymoron. You're going to have to decide your, this day who you're going to serve. But, okay, and let's go to, okay, let's go to 2 Timothy 4. When you get there, say amen, 4 1. I charge thee therefore before God and the Lord Jesus Christ, who should judge the quick and the dead at his appearing in his kingdom. Preach the word what? Preach the word. Be instant in season and what? Out of season. Be instant in season. Be Whether it's good, whether you're feeling good, whether you're feeling bad. Be instant in season and out. But it said preach the word. Minister the word. Sure, exhort. Be an evangelist. Preach the word, be instant, in season and out. Now, here at this Baptist, talk about some stuff that people don't like. Reprove, rebuke, exhort. With what? All long suffering and what? Doctrine, scripture. 
Still bringing the scripture in on everything. For the time will come when they will not endure what? Sound. Sound. Meaning, the, this is what this means. This is exactly what it means. Don't go to the left or to the right. Sound. Right here. Solid, stable, sure foundation. Sound. Endure sound doctrine. But after, they will not endure sound doctrine, but after their what? Their own lust shall heap them to, uh, to themselves what? Teachers. Who what? Who tickle their ears. That's all YouTube offers you. Teachers that tickle your ears. Ooh, I like what they say here. Ooh, have, have you heard them over her? Ooh, girl, you just got to go her. Ooh, they just made me feel so fluffy on the inside. Teachers that tickle your ears. Heaping together teachers that tickle your ears. Let me find my place because, boy, I'm a... <laughs> And they shall turn away, and they shall turn away their ears from what? Truth. People done turned away from the gospel of Jesus Christ, the truth, to, to unsound doctrine, fables, babblings. They shall turn away from the truth and shall be turned unto fables. Be turned unto fables. But watch thou in all things, endure what? Endure afflictions. Do the work of a what? Do the work of an evangelist. What is an evangelist? Somebody who just spreads the gospel. Spreading the gospel. Do the work of an evangelist. Do you need a mic? No. no. Do the work of the evangelist. Even if you're getting persecuted, if you're running, if you're getting afflicted. Do the work of an evangelist. Make full proof of thy ministry. See, if you're an evangelist, evangelist you got a min that's a ministry. That's a ministry for the Lord. Make foolproof of it. How effective are you going to be with your evangelism, with your preaching, with your ministering to the lost on the street? Make foolproof of your ministry. For I am ready to be offered in the time of my departures at hand. I have fought the good fight. I have finished my course. I have kept the faith. His force, there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, should give me at that day. And not to me only, but, to, but unto all them also that love his appearing. Amen. Stand to your feet. Amen. Amen. Doing the work of an evangelist. Amen. We all are called to evangelize. We, are, we all are called to minister. We all are called to exhort. But it ain't necessarily right here. It can be walking down the street at your, your child's school, on your job. Do your job now. But if the opportunity presents itself, take the opportunity. Amen? Wherever we go, whoever we come into contact with, and if you feel that urging from the, from the Father saying, share with them. I just buy them something. That's evangelism. Without saying a word. And give them a... You know what? God loves you. Amen. Go ahead and play, son. So I ask closed heads bow. Father, we thank you this morning. Oh, gracious God that you are. We love you. We thank you that you love us. We thank you for your, your, your mercies that are new every morning over our lives, Lord God. We receive your mercies, Father God. Father, we pray your hedge of protection encamped all around about us, over our homes, over our vehicles, Lord God, over our loved ones, Lord God, over our, over our, wherever we are, Lord God. Father, we need your protection. Hide us under the shadow of your almighty, Father God. Lead and guide us, Lord God. Search our heart, Lord God, if there be anything in us that's not like you. Show us so we can repent of it, Lord God. Because if we take our last breath, we want to know that we're right with you, Lord God. We repent of sin before you, Lord God. Oh, great and mighty God, have your way in our lives. As we give you the praise, the glory, and the honor. We love you. We need you. We adore you. In the mighty name of Jesus. And everybody says.